everybody. Welcome to the Jib Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We are live. It is 8 p.m. Eastern here, 5 p.m. Pacific at our broadcast center, better known as Lovity Hall. That's right. Our viewers who are very proactive and interactive, they call themselves the Lovities. They call me Mr. Lovity. They call this Lovity Hall. They're part of our Lovity squad and they welcome our guests as Lovities as well. Isn't that kind of cool? Doesn't our world need a little bit more lovity about now? That all came because I, in the summertime of last year, I said the show has lots of light, love, and levity. And when I said love and levity too fast, out came whew, whew, lovity. And the audience jumped on it. They said, that's it, Jim. We love that word. We are now your lovity squad. You are Mr. Lovity, and this is Lovity Hall. I'll take it. The guests love it. The viewers love it. They're very interactive. If you'd like to comment and post during the show, you can, because we are live right now, beaming all around the world on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. So come participate. Say hello. Let us know what city, town, country you're watching from, because we do have folks watching from all around the world. And uh, this broadcast, in addition to being live, will also be archived and saved on our YouTube channel. Matter of fact, there's over 435, almost 440 episodes, day in and day out of extraordinary guests from Broadway and Hollywood, television, music, film, stage, food, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, you name it, health and wellness, pets. <laughs> we really cover it all on this show. Life, living, uh, healing. I mean, everything is talked about and described because this is a variety talk show. Sort of harkening back to the old school, Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, warm conversational style, bringing in the audience as well, which I love to do, which is very rare. You don't see that a lot on uh, you know the internet or YouTube where the audience is actually brought in live and there's interaction. I love to do that. I do that in my professional work in television and radio and stage and film as well. So uh, we've got that old school quality, but we also mix it in with a modern twist and a modern vibe of today. Speaking of twists, we toast all of you and we welcome all of you as well. It's nice to see you. Every time I do this, I feel like I'm supposed to be at church and I'm blessing all of you. The only part that I'm not doing is this part, right? <laughs> now you're fully blessed. You have the blessings of JMS Live and the Lovities. You're all Lovities now. Uh, very fancy schmancy, huh? Nothing more than extra pale ginger ale. That's all that's in here. Truthfully, you can see the bubbles. It's not champagne. Mm. And we don't have ginger ale for a while and then you have it. Mm. I had some chicken parmesan for dinner tonight and a Caesar salad and a chocolate chip cookie. We had a nice feast here at the house today. I made sure that I ate before because a lot of times when we do these shows, I don't get a chance because my day is so busy with my professional work and then, you know, producing and creating and hosting these episodes that I don't get a chance to eat during the day. So I made sure I ate very well. <laughs> we were out at the coast like uh, 99 degrees outside and humid, but beautiful, sunny right now. It's 85 degrees at eight o'clock at night and still sunny out here along the coast. We're in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state area along the Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. Matter of fact, our very special guest is tucked away in scenic Northwestern New Jersey over towards upstate New York and Pennsylvania. I'm talking about prolific and award-winning composer and lyricist Thomas Tierney. Tom is with us tonight, and we're going to be uh, graced with wonderful live music as well as uh, other material we're going to be sharing with you guys as well. So good to have you here. Thanks for joining us uh, on a Friday night, everybody. And again, if you've ever missed any of our episodes, they're all archived for you on our YouTube channel. Now, before we begin, we would love it if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the one you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. Check out 400 plus episodes of our series. Really cool stuff there for you. Uh, Pop-up shows we've done live, host viewer chats, holiday theme shows, on location shows, surprise episodes, and a bevy of amazing guests, celebrity friends, legends, and so much more child stars. I mean, you name it. Uh, so subscribe to the channel. We would love that. And while you're doing that, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our episodes live. And then of course, 
our surprise pop-up shows and everything else we do here on our series. Hello to all the lovities watching all around the world. We love having you here from all points of the globe and more and more people watching our shows, viewing. The viewership is up considerably lately and we say thank you very much. That helps us big time so we can continue to deliver the content that we have like seven days a week live is extraordinary. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but we love doing it for all of you. Give this episode a thumbs up too on our YouTube channel while you're subscribing. Uh, don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. That's that bell icon. And also uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode and leave a comment on our YouTube channel. Thanks to those of you who've been doing that, Janet and Mary and Christine and uh, Alessandra, Juanita, Many of you have been doing that. Kathleen, thank you very, very much. You've been leaving the comments. We really appreciate that. Austin's been leaving comments as well, all of you. And we thank you very much. Share the levity, of course. Uh, tell everybody about our series. I know you've been doing that and you've been sharing the uh, links on your Facebook pages and Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much for that. Matter of fact, you can find me on all those uh, platforms. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, of course, our YouTube channel, all at Gym Masters TV. Uh, while you're live, we have super chat, super emojis, super stickers, super thanks. That helps support the show, and that's something new. We highlight your comment live in front of everybody, and uh, I personally thank you for it on the air as well. We appreciate that. Let's check in with some of the lovities before we welcome our very special guest live from tucked away in Northwest New Jersey on a weekend, kicking off the weekend. Um Dawn is here. Hey, Dawn, good to see you. Thank you very much for the greetings. She's one of our lovely viewers. And Maureen is here from Arizona. And she says, greetings, everyone. It is the weekend. And I hope you're all ready, uh, as I am. Time to kick off a wonderful evening with Jim and my lovely family as we welcome Thomas to the squad. He already knows about all the lovely. I told him about the lovely, and he started singing lovely and playing it on the piano. <laughs> It's amazing how that happens. And uh, Merlin in Ontario, Canada seconds what Maureen in Arizona said. Well said, Maureen. Ditto. I love that. Good to see you, Merlin in Ontario. Mary Bishop in Florida is saying, hello, Jim and lovely friends. Good to see you, Mary. I'm a very interactive host, as I am in my professional work in TV and radio, so I love to greet and acknowledge uh, some of our viewers who are here all the time, and then we bring the guest on. Mary's here from Florida. Good to see you, Mary. I mean, these folks are here night in, night out, and if they can't be with us you know, while they're in front of their computer or their TV at home, they take us on their mobile. I mean, a lot of people watch us on their cell phones. They, when they're at you know, family functions or at fairs and festivals, they, were, they still have us on so they don't miss the action. I think that's cool. Sherry Larson did that last week when it was her birthday. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday to Sherry, who's watching in Kansas. Uh, more coming in here. Jane in Sweden. Hello, loveties and Jim. We love when Jane is with us, which is really all the time. Uh, and considering it's like 2, 3 a.m. in Sweden, that is very beautiful. Good to see you, Jane, lovely Jane. Hope you're doing well today. I've subscribed to all your platforms. Toby, thank you very much in Encino, California. Good to see you, Toby. We love it. And it's 88 degrees in Encino. Wow, just a couple of degrees warmer than here on the East Coast in the Northeast. Very nice. But in Encino, you're not quite getting that coastal breeze we're getting, I imagine, huh? <laughs> Dawn says it's 78 degrees in Illinois, where she is. Toby says, love your shows, Jim. Love you, Toby. June Rachelson Aspa is here from Maryland. She is representing the greater Baltimore area. That's right, of Maryland, Baltimore. Uh, Merlin gives thumbs up and uh, more coming in here. Thanks for all these great comments. Just checking in with everybody. Make sure everybody's okay. Uh, you're doing well. Uh, the chicken parmesan dinner sounded good. Yummy, right? It was very, very good. That looks good. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, nice to have you here as well. Cheers from Gotham. We love it. Gotham, of course, New York City. Anne is here from Southern California as well. Uh, you're bringing in the uh, tea timers. Fantastic. We love that. Uh, and Anne is in Southern California. It's good to see you, Anne. We all survived Friday the 13th. Well, it's still early. Our, our very special guest, uh, Tom, said that Friday the 13th is actually a very 
good luck day for his family. There's been weddings and all kinds of different things, births on the 13th. Um, so keep our fingers crossed. It's not quite midnight yet here. <laughs> Merlin gives cheers. And uh, Terry Linder, welcome to the show. It's good to see you, Terry. Welcome. Good having you here. Says hello. Uh, you loved when uh, film and television actor Rico Anderson was with us last night. We had a blast with him. If you missed that episode, you guys can see it again. Hello, everyone. Glad to see you beautiful loveties. That's Anne in Southern California. Good stuff. Uh, June says hello. Nice to see you as well again, June. Howdy, everybody from Toby again. And all the loveties. Folks, check in a little bit later in the show as well. And once again, there's another hello from June and from Toby. So we got Baltimore and we've got Encino covered here as well. Sherry Larson. Uh, Dawn, hopefully uh, your spirits will be picked up by our show as we uh, try to do all the time. We try to put smiles in people's faces with some of the light, love, levity, and uh, levity as well. Love it, love it, love it. And um, you are, and Dana is here. Dana Rickler, greetings from Ontario, Canada. And Merlin is in Ontario as well. So, as well. so she wants to know, where in Ontario are you, uh, Dana? What part of Ontario are you? 2.30 uh, a.m. right now for Jane in Sweden. You are really a... a Faithful Lovity. You're welcome, Dawn. We'll put some smiles on your face. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Always a pleasure to have you here. Just checking in, checking in with everybody. Now it's time to welcome our very special guest. You can keep commenting during the show live. Don't forget the super chat, super emoji, super stickers, all that fun stuff. And uh, let us know where you're watching from. We love that. And don't forget, give it a thumbs up and a comment on our YouTube channel as well. So Tom is in the house. And he is an extraordinary composer, lyricist. He's been working on some really fantastic projects. We're very excited to uh, have him here on our show. It's amazing. Now, if you look at that picture, you actually see two Toms, don't you? You see Tom there, and then you see a second Tom reflected in the mirror. How did he do that? <laughs> the magic of photography. Um you know what's great? He's uh, he's a great guy too, very affable and uh, very, very talented. And if you're not familiar with Tom, well, he's composed so much music uh, for Broadway, off-Broadway. Uh, he composed the music of Narnia based on the C.S. Lewis, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, which has played in the City of London Festival off-Broadway in New York, and in more than 1,000 productions throughout the United States, Canada, Great Britain, and Australia. His uh, Narnia Suite for Symphony Orchestra and Four Singers premiered at New York's Geffen Hall at Lincoln Center. He also wrote music and lyrics for Jungle Queen, Debutante, produced for New York's NYMF Festival, and by Seattle's Village Theater. He also contributed several songs, music, and lyrics for Off-Broadway's Pets and the music for the Dream Team at the Goodspeed Opera House, which is in Connecticut, and also Tommy Toon's one-man musical, Ichabod, that's in Boston and in New York. Another musical, of course, of Tom's, Eleanor, an American love story, is played in many U.S. theaters, including Ford's Theater in Washington. Two Helen Hayes Awards were garnered. Uh, Chicago's Marriott Theater in Lincolnshire, Seattle's Village Theater, and so much more. His musical, The Year of Living Dangerously, based on the novel that became the film starring Mel Gibson, Sigourney Weaver, and Oscar winner Linda Hunt, was presented in concert at Feinstein's 54 Below in New York City back in 2017. Current projects include Diamond and the North Wind, based on the classic novel At the Back of the North Wind by George MacDonald, and A Girl's Guide to Moving On with co-author Joseph Robinetti, based on the novel and best-selling author, Debbie McComber. This is just some of the incredible work. Did you know also for television, he has written two scores for NBC's award-winning series, Unicorn Tales, and the theme music for We Remember Eleanor. That's right. And that was narrated by Margaret Truman Daniels. He's also written music and lyrics for corporate conventions and events, including those for Coca-Cola, IBM, State Farm Insurance, Johnson & Johnson. He also composed Bringing the World Closer to You. That is the theme song for AT&T's AT Pavilion at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center, which played 144 times 
a day for 10 years. He was born in Missouri, raised in Illinois, and started composing in fifth grade. That's just the short list, folks. Let's welcome him on to talk more about what it was like in fifth grade for him <laughs> and all the other great things that he continues to do in his fabulous career. Live from Northwestern, New Jersey, award-winning composer, lyricist, Tom Tierney. Tom, welcome to the show. Hey there. Hey there. <laughs> what an intro, I tell you. I tell you, right? <laughs> too much, <laughs> too much. That's like an Academy Award introduction, isn't it? <laughs> I can't sure remember doing. I can't remember doing all that stuff. <laughs> Do you remember when you were five? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll skip. We'll we'll say what was it like when you were ten? Uh, <laughs> Karen <laughs> Josephson is here. Welcome, Karen. Hello from Nashville. Glad to tune in. Welcome to the show. Uh, we hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, Mary Bishop is welcoming Thomas. We love that. And thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, Dana you. says, uh, thanks for tagging me, Toby. So Toby told Dana, we love that. So did Karen. She got tagged by uh, Toby. We appreciate that as well. So everybody is welcoming everybody here. Christine Clifton is in the house from North Carolina. Hi, Jim and Lovety friends. Hi, June. Welcome, Tom, to the show tonight. Nice. We love that. We love that. <laughs> So how are you doing there in Northwest New Jersey? Oh, doing great, actually, doing great. It's hot here too, by the way. It is hot there, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So are you working on some projects right now? Are you working on music, uh, current productions? Well, yes, um, I'm working actually, I'm doing a lot of marketing these days, uh, you know, for shows like The Year of Living Dangerously. Um, and, you know, that's, that keeps me pretty busy. But uh, also starting, you know, doing work on the, the new show, The Girl's Guide to Moving On, which you mentioned, based on Debbie Maycomer's novel. So that's uh, that's a current project. So I'm keeping pretty busy with a lot of stuff. So how long have you been there in uh, northwestern New Jersey? I've had a place here uh, since the late 70s, actually. So it's mainly, far mainly as a, yeah, it was a weekend place, really. A weekend place, yeah, far right. enough away yeah. from the big, the hustle bustle of the big yeah. city, so you can uh, so you can think and create and and have a little peace and quiet, right? You got it. Yeah, yeah. For for years, it was just weekends here. Right, exactly. But so, lately, it, you know, I'm here more. So born in uh, Missouri and grew up in Illinois. That's um, correct. What were some of those influences for you back in the Midwest that uh, pointed you in the direction of wanting to become a composer or a lyricist, be, be immersed in the world of, of music and the arts, Tom? Well, it's just one of those things that, that happened gradually. But as you said, I wrote my first song in the fifth grade, completely forgot about it. Then in the seventh grade, I wrote another song. So my seventh grade teacher played it for the entire school <laughs> and I crawled under my desk. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a song that's buried somewhere in my archives. I have it somewhere. <laughs> then again, I forgot about it. And then when I was in high school, uh, my grandmother took me to see the movie, The King and I. Yes. Uh, wonderful, you know, the Roger Zimmerstein musical. Oh yeah. And when I saw that movie, I said, oh my goodness, that's a story and there's songs in the story. I said, you know, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I started doing it when I was a sophomore in high school. I checked out plays from the school library, and and then I started writing songs that would fit into the play. And uh, that's that's basically how I got started. I really haven't stopped writing writing music, you know, since then. Mainly interested in musical theater. It was the, that was the main thing that got me going. You know, the King and I was the inspiration. So that was it. So. Uh... You know, as far as learning and getting the training, what what fostered all of that? What what was that like for you early on, getting the actual experience? Well, I had some wonderful teachers, um, yeah. particularly when I mentioned the teacher in junior high. It was Leah Sims, who played the song for the for the, uh, for the school. But she also was a composer herself, and um, she gave me some compositions she'd written that I learned on the piano. And really inspired me with the idea that you know that I could write my own things. That's essentially that that was, she was a very important teacher. <laughs> yes. Um, so that you know, teachers are great. 
So, yeah, when you look back, there's a couple of teachers for me, too, that really stood out, uh, who really just, one in fifth grade, one in eighth grade, one in sixth grade, and then a couple in high school and a couple professors in college that really just stood out. I, I tended to... Um, I don't know about you, but I tended to be, I was responsive to all, but the ones who took the time, the ones who really seemed passionate, the ones that had a little, they, they exuded a little warmth in their delivery were the ones oh, yeah. that spoke to me a little bit more, the ones who seemed to be a little empathetic, right. uh, a little warmer. Um, I, I never found that too much in the math teachers. <laughs> I found that more in the English teachers and the science uh -huh. and the history and the, it's a, and the art teachers, the music teachers, uh, at least the ones that I had. Uh, yeah. And so how about you? Did you gravitate towards teachers that? Uh, oh, absolutely. And this woman Leah warm Sims, and took the time. Yeah. Yeah. She was very warm. And, and it would be like after school, she would meet with several of us who were interested in more interested in music than other students. And spent a lot of a lot of time with us encouraging our interest and um, that that really that really helped me get going with stuff yeah that's what it takes uh, the inspiration and uh, yeah and even like now with math the way it's taught it's so different it's much more creative now too because the computer programs and it's it's very engaging now and uh but yeah so so you knew early on so yeah. What would what would you were you involved in like school plays and various things? Were you diving yes. right in early? Yeah, some, somewhat. Sure, I acted in some school plays, but we weren't. High school high school was not doing musicals at that point. Right. But right. Uh, actually, I can remember in the second grade, my second grade class was taken over to a university close, close by, Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, Illinois. And uh, I just remember being enchanted by, I think they did a Peter Pan <laughs> play, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, Southern Illinois University drama students. And so that was really, uh, you know, that was an inspiration too, I, you know, that, that I think stuck with me for a while. So you, you mentioned a little of the acting, did that bug bite you or did it fly past you and then out? It, it kind of flew past me, but, <laughs> you know, the fact that I was interested in writing songs for for plays, it, it, that, you know, it, it, my interest was, was peaked, you yeah. know, with, with drama and plays and, yeah. and then musicals, of course, you know. So then in college, though, I, I, I had wanted to be an architect. So there was this oh, fight. Me too. Me too. There was a fight in me between being an architect yes. and, and music. And so I started out at the University of Illinois. In the school of architecture took the mechanical drawing classes all of oh, that right all I of those that. things you know I and then I, I i finally i actually wrote a review a musical review at, in college my freshman year all the songs and the, and the guys that were head of the, the theater department put put it on they liked my stuff so that was very encouraging as well speaking of teachers so um you, you know then all of a sudden i said you know i really i'm liking this more than i am the architecture <laughs> <laughs> but instead of architecture, I ended up going into communications and studying piano and music literature on the side in yeah. college. So, um, but I studied with a very strict piano teacher at the University of Illinois. She was head of the piano department. She, she didn't exactly hit my knuckles, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with her ruler. But, but I learned a lot about playing that I didn't know before. You know, but some technique of piano playing. What would be something that still sticks with you today that you had learned? You I, I mean, oh gosh, well, one thing is just to, to curve your fingers. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean that's that's kind of a small thing, but I I remember that that gave you more strength, you know, in, in uh, uh, playing you know say classical music and you know Bach or whatever. Of course, I was a huge. Huge Gershwin fan. Gershwin. Started, so normally you Gershwin. had your fingers sort of straight out and curving them made uh, probably, all the in the world. Huh? Probably. It was just a slow bill and things you, you know, and also uh, when you go from note to note, you know, having a transition, um, you're leaving, it's hard to explain. When you hit the next note, you, you gradually lift your finger on the, on the first note. <laughs> 
I don't know. That was that was something else. I mean, I just I'm just now remembering that was something she she helped with. So we'll bring it there were just those, those little technique things, you know, that I learned. So that that helped me as I was writing songs as well. But in terms of writing songs, I was pretty much self-taught. I just kept writing songs and copying things that I liked on the radio and, and in shows and so forth. That's fantastic. What what yeah, kind of music? What were you listening to as you were coming up the uh, the ranks? Or some of the music that uh, was it musical music? Uh, was it classical jazz? What was some of the? It, it, it was a combination. Were? But my really my my great love was musical theater. Musical so theater. I started buying every single album I could, you know, on Broadway shows and that sort of thing. But of course. Also, I'm going to school dances, and there's you know rock around the clock, and yeah, I mean the whole rock thing started in that. I got sort of interested in, in that to a point, um, you know, and, and the pop stuff. But the musical theater was really my my main inspiration, and then some classical too. I mean, I love, especially like Gershwin. Oh, you yeah. call Gershwin classical. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, as you come up, there's different opportunities and different things that happen along the way. And you've been involved in so much incredible work, Tom. Uh, film, television, stage, uh, commercial work, corporate work. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be a pivotal moment for you? What would have been, if you look back, wow, that person noticing that or this door opening or that opportunity really was crucial because then that led to all these other things. Do you recall an opportunity or two like that? Well, one of them was when I was in college. Um, Dory Sherry, the, the you know the famous producer at MGM, who produced many famous movies and musicals and so forth, and actually worked on Broadway as well as writer and director. Um, he came to visit the U of I and I said, "Oh, this is." And I'd written a lot of songs by that point, and I said, "You know, let me let me track him down and see if I can talk him into listening to some of my music." So I did that. I went through the, the department where he was being hosted and uh, tracked him down and asked him if he would, you know, listen to some of my music. So I, I picked him up at his hotel and drove him to a place at the university where there's a piano and brought him in and played some things. And he said, I, I like this a lot. He said, if you want to come to New York, I'll introduce you to some people. So yeah, within the year, I, I did exactly that. I went to New York and uh, and uh, called Dory, Dory Sherry and uh, went to see him. And he called a couple of people that I got to meet. And one was Frank Lesser, the famous composer, lyricist of many Broadway shows and a lot of yeah. pop songs from Hollywood. So I went into Frank Lesser's office, which was great. He had a huge grand piano, like a, almost a concert grand in his office. So he said, we'll play me some things. So I said that. <laughs> I sit down at the piano and played one or two things. And the first thing I played, he ran over to the piano. And so play that again. How did you do that? <laughs> he wanted to know how I how I'd written this. Do you remember what it was that you uh, played? Um I don't remember I don't think I remember it right now, but it was, it was a song called Get Known to Evening. It's part of a, a, a television musical that I had worked yeah. on in, in graduate school at yeah. the at Anyway. And then the next day, uh, Dory Sherry introduced me to Burton Lane, you know, who wrote uh, sure. yeah, many shows, including uh, On a Clear Day You Can See Forever and a lot of movie musicals and so forth. Yeah. So I went to his apartment and played a few things. He was, he was helpful, too. He was interesting. But uh, the, 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 nice, the kind of fun irony of all this is that many years later, when I started writing shows for Theater Works USA in, in New York City, they, they, they're a very well-known company that... Uh, writes young audience musicals that travel around the country. They test them in New York and so forth. Anyway, I finally I got together with a lyricist, uh, the lyricist for Narnia, for example, and also a couple of things for Theater Works USA. Um, his name is Ted Drachman. Mm -hmm. And Ted, it turns out, is Frank Lesser's nephew. His mother was Frank's sister. Wow. So I mean, it's like kind of like that that small world thing. Yes. That us, you know? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, what so a connection Ted, that is. Yeah, huh? yeah. So Ted and I have written a lot of things together, and he tells me a lot of great, fun stories about Uncle Frank, um, and a lot of inside stories. You know, 
Not that I can remember them right now, but I was going to say <laughs> nothing that you can share with us uh, live uh, at your well, master we, show. Well, I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think <about> it. <laughs> so along the way, pretty early, you came across some very influential, uh, legendary people in the industry. Then, huh? Yeah, I did, and I was just visiting New York. I hadn't even moved to New York yet. Then that was just so, all on a visit. No, no, no. no. <laughs> So then when I did eventually move to New York, um, I had uh, been working for an advertising agency in Champaign-Urbana, where University of Illinois is located, and uh, looked for work, you know, as a, as a copywriter or someone who worked to work in advertising. So uh, this was another fortuitous thing that happened. I, instead of getting a job with an ad agency, I got a job with the Bell System in public relations writing and producing things for them in, in public relations. And <clears throat> after a year or so there, they did. They found out I wrote music, and we mm. did a couple of things. But what happened was the telephone system broke down uh, and and like was failing yeah, <laughs> yeah. in New York City. I don't know if you remember this. It was a while ago. Yeah, sure. And so, the, and, and so I was in charge yeah. of an exhibit at the New York State Fair in Syracuse. Oh, wow. And it, yeah. and it was like a, a promoting their phones and phone service and long distance. And they said, you know, we can't do that because the, the Public Service Commission said, you know, it's, it's a no go. You cannot promote your products so come up with another idea. So I said to the guys at, at AT&T, it was actually New York Telephone, which was New York Telephone, sure. Yeah. yeah. I said, uh, and it became well, write, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I said, well, how about we write a show? Um, about how we're going to fix the phones, and then we'll do. Then we'll write a, you know, and then we'll. It could be a, a song about that, you know, and then a song about, uh, you know, the people that we're working for and so forth, you know. That we, yeah. And they said, "Oh, great idea! Find somebody to write it." <laughs> so, so I went home one weekend, and with the help of, of a friend, and was Don Arnold. Uh, mm -hmm. We wrote a couple of songs together, and I brought them in the next week. And they said, "We love it. We love it. We're going to produce it." <laughs> So they wow. put me into a studio with 26 piece orchestra. You know, that was before synthesizers. Yeah, that's the real yeah. thing. Real musicians, yeah. the real sound, right? That full sound. Right. I know. So that was that was an exciting development. So right off, I was writing these shows, a little show for, for at and And so I did that for like two or three years. And uh, and then one of these, then actually, I got married. <laughs> My wife said, "You know, I'm working here at AT and T. You know, you have this talent. Why don't you offer that to other people?" So I found a company. I'd done a show for AT and T. Found a company called Carabiner, a wonderful Carabiner, uh, company that produced uh, shows for for company conventions and, mm -hmm. and business meetings. And so they heard my stuff. It was a great. We'll hire you. So I ended up doing a lot of their music for many, many years. And that was uh, I call that my bread and butter. I say that that helped me pay for my habit of writing musicals. <laughs> right. So I was doing that and then I was at, I was writing musicals and at the same time. It's kind of like being in the world of jingles. Did you, we were involved in jingles? Yeah, I, too? I did a few jingles. Yeah. I did a jingle for the beef industry once and then actually AT&T took one of my songs and turned it into a jingle. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. But I mainly was doing shows, like little Broadway shows for businesses. Right. So I ended up doing, you know, more than a hundred of those over a period of many years. Um, you, you name some of the companies I worked for, but, uh, you know, Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson. State Farm actually did, they did a whole uh, series. Almost every two or three years, they would do a big musical with, you know, 15 or more cast members mm. uh, with, a, with a book show, like a, yeah. just like a Broadway kind of musical. So State I did several. Farm is several. there. Remember that? <laughs> yes, exactly. State Farm yeah. is there. In fact, we yeah. did an arrangement of that song for one of the shows. Did you really? For, for the whole cast to sing. Yes. yes. That's fantastic. Yes. So I had see, a, lot of, a lot of fun doing that. And we hired all the Broadway people who were between shows. To know? come in to do. Yeah. Right. Because they were, they were well paid. For these and jobs. session musicians, too, that coming in? Were they? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And New York City has the best, well, among the best musicians in the world. Yeah, and and so uh, we, you know, we brought in the best musicians and uh, keep, you know the the violin section from the from the Philharmonic. I mean, it was it was incredible. 
that's when there was money to spend on all of those types of things where you that's brought in true. The, you know that's the string true. section and you, you oh, don't yeah. hear string sections like you used to in a lot of music today that's right well the Even synthesizer you know synthesizer once the synthesizer version, right became popular or you know and it was certainly great because you could save a lot of money you didn't need as many musicians to to produce a good you know decent sound did you take to it when it first came or were you resistant to the sound of the synthesizer in the beginning because mm -hmm. of, of the electronic no, nature of it? No, I took to it because it was a nice, you know, different sound that you could use. Yeah. yeah. Like the match game theme. The Moog. Uh, so uh, you really, like I said, touched upon so many different areas of the arts. Um, did you like being in the corporate arena? Was that, I mean, it sounds like you had a good time. I, with that. I did. I mean, interestingly, I, I got a degree in advertising. Yeah. Um, while I was studying, you know, piano and music at U of I, I, had, I got a degree in, it was the School of Journalism, but in advertising. So I, I had an understanding of where people were coming from <laughs> in advertising. So it wasn't a strange thing for me. Now, some people, some musicians, writers, get very upset if they have to write something for a, a product. But for me, it just was kind of like, oh, okay, sure, we'll do it. And people don't realize that, uh, uh, and I've done many commercial shoots where I've been in the commercial, on the commercial, what have you, mm -hmm. the amount of work that goes into something as simple as a 30-second commercial, oh, yeah. uh, not just from the casting and the shooting and the actual filming of it, but the music and there's this whole thing about whether it's a TV show theme or a movie score or a commercial, the feeling you have to uh, create uh, mm -hmm. in, in, and especially back when you heard more longer versions of TV themes. Now you don't really hear mm -hmm. lengthier versions. They don't roll the credits. It's like quick in and out. But before there would be themes to shows and you could, you'd get a certain feeling from just hearing the theme to that TV show. That's so true. Uh, and music is so uh, incredible that way. So, but what you had to do in that 60 seconds, 30 seconds, whether it's a commercial, a TV theme, whatever it is, uh, really had to grab people and it had to be concise and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of work, right? It seems like it was easy. Oh, that's only 30 seconds of music, but what goes into that is sure. extraordinary. Well, I feel like for some reason I have been given a gift for melody. <laughs> I know that yes, sounds like I'm, gift for I'm melody, bragging, yeah. but right you know, from the time I was in fifth grade, you, you know, um, and on through really all the things that I've done, um, I feel like it's it's been a gift. I mean, it's like writing writing music is sometimes it takes longer than other times, you know. But yes, there 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 are things that I have written. Um, music that i've written very quickly you know like a, like a melody that has come quickly yes uh, now so lyrics are a whole other story <laughs> yes like it's, dana it says of, <laughs> certain jingles are epic they stay with you forever <laughs> yeah. well and lyrics are, you know, come from a different a different side of your brain i think Yes, and, and June yeah. knows that. Our friend June is a uh, lyricist. Being a copywriter in mm -hmm. advertising is best training a musical writer can get, learning to write on the spot. Mm -hmm. And she so had true. loved that. Uh, you're both a composer and a lyricist. Yeah. Do you have one that speaks to your heart first? Are you the composer who happens to be a lyricist, or are you a lyricist who happens to compose? What what do you, what speaks to you first, Tom? I'm saying I'm, I'm a composer that first, you know, I, to tell you the truth, I started writing lyrics because I had trouble finding lyricists, especially earlier in my life. <laughs> um, when I came to New York, then I began to meet good lyric writers and work with them. And I, I love that. I love working with lyric, lyric writers, but because I, all my corporate work i did always done my own lyrics <laughs> so um so you did your own and, lyrics for that as well yeah yeah uh with shows i mostly have worked with lyricists but then there are a few shows i've written both music and lyrics mm. uh, yeah uh do you ever have it where you are what do you do first do you write the composition first and then the lyrics 
or do you have the lyrics in your head and then you wrap the music around it or can that be either or it, it can be either or but i much prefer to start with the idea and maybe a, a hook phrase um or a line from a, from a lyric you know, to give me a feel. And then if it's for a show, like who's singing it? What's it about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and I, so that basically, then I, I'd like the music to come along at that point. Yeah. And then let the lyrics fill in, basically. Now, there have been times when I'll write a song that way, but then we'll say, well, we need an introduction. Then the lyricist will like write some lyrics for a, a verse to introduce the, the main melody. And then I'll set it. But generally speaking, I, I prefer music to come first with the idea, with a hook, with you know, with a phrase, whatever, or a title. Dana has a question, uh, and good to see you, Dana. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. You're now a lovely. Oh, by the way, uh, Tom, early into the show, our viewers have already dubbed you officially a lovely. Part of oh. the Gym Masters show, Lovities, right. part of the Lovity family. So there's Grammys, I Tonys, Emmys, Oscars, Peabody's, Tellies. But when you get a Lovity on the Gym Masters <laughs> show live, are your feet tingling right now? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I love, I love being a Lovity. Let's put you it are a Lovity, absolutely. Jones says it as well. Hi, Jim and Lovities and Tom. Glad to be here tonight. Uh, Dana has a question, a nice question here. If you were a newbie, somebody new to writing and you were approached for a song, um, if yours was to be used in a movie. So you're new to writing, somebody's approaching you for a song, and there's a possibility of being used in a movie, what is the next step? Well, Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of steps if, uh, involved if, if in you're that. New, if you're new to writing, uh, and it's better if you have a little experience, you know, before you write a, a song for a movie. But if somebody asks you and you you feel you can do it, um, get to it. I mean, if, you know, a lot of a lot of composers have been successful just going to a tape recorder and yeah. singing a melody into the tape recorder, yeah, and then get it, getting a an arranger or someone to come in and write it out for them. Right. So you don't necessarily have to be, you know, a pianist or no formal music. You know to write a to write a good melody you know exactly you know so, we had uh, yeah. i was gonna say we had melissa manchester on the show and um she said that and I, i'm sure it works the same for you i know it's worked for me this way sometimes when i get a spark an aha moment for some creativity mm -hmm. she said that when we had her on as a guest and if anybody missed that episode with legend melissa manchester you can see it on our youtube channel jim masters mm -hmm. tv mm -hmm. um she said that there are times when she can even be in her own house where all of a sudden she's sparked by an idea. Something happens where she gets this aha moment. It, she could be, you know, sleeping and then wakes up out of sleep, whatever it is. She immediately, when it's raw and rich and real, she runs right to the piano, sits sure. down, presses record on the recorder, mm -hmm and just starts playing and sort of working it out, whatever it is, even if it's sure. mishmash, whatever that is, mm -hmm. da, 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 she records it to save it because the further you get away from the actual uh, inspirational aha moment mm -hmm. you're having, it's mm -hmm. sort of weekends and weekends and weekends. Do you do that too? Are there times where all of a sudden there's a light bulb of inspiration and you go right to the instrument or the recorder or whatever it is, and try to preserve it as you are thinking about it fresh absolutely absolutely it's happened a lot i mean i used to I, I had must have gone through thousands of cassettes when i'd be you know coming up with a melody or, or working on something and i would i would record everything i was doing on a cassette and then go back to see what i liked you know? but there were other times when uh something just hit me and and I said, this, this feels like the right thing. And I would go to the piano and I'd pick it out. <laughs> that actually happened with the song I wrote for, uh, for the Epcot Center, you know, for, for Disney. Um, Bring the world closer to you. I just remember walking around my apartment in New York and trying to figure out what I was going to do with it. And suddenly a melody hit me and 
and I ran to the piano. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. It down, yeah. It's a smart thing to do. It's like journaling too, when you're you're thinking about stuff and you're journaling your thoughts, and then you pull out. Uh, I, I believe it or not, I I did that when I was 13, and, and you know I used to run around with a tape recorder and a little microphone pretending to be a reporter interviewing the family and the relatives and and taping things and uh we would do plays in the garage with the neighborhood kids and i was always and then i pulled out i went through a box of things and i noticed this book and it said daily journal and i had forgotten that when i was 13 i kept for an entire year a journal of everything uh what my day of school was like uh, mm -hmm. the new turtles I got for a pet or whatever. And it was mm -hmm. kind of cool when you go back in time and you pull some of that stuff out. Uh, I'm a very big preserver of memories and of history. I get that, I think, from my dad, who has always been the one with the camera, always newspaper clippings and scrapbooks and just uh, historical. And when you have those aha moments, really important to try to preserve them so i would do i would grab the cassette recorder and just start recording and now i have tons of cassettes and material and video mm -hmm. and some of the people that um are in it or on it aren't even here anymore but mm -hmm. it's preserved and oh. that's really really beautiful to have uh dana uh has rephrased her question she's saying so so they've heard the people heard the song Oh. To talk about and they want it so, oh i see so okay. what happens if you're a writer you happen to write a song and now they're asking for that song and it's new to her she's not sure what you oh, should oh really I see. Do. do you get okay. lawyers involved legal i would imagine yeah i mean i think find a lawyer who is an entertainment lawyer who is used to you know making a, an arrangement between a producer and writers, you know, for, for the rights. Um, it's important to talk to somebody who knows the business because you don't want to you don't want to give anything away. <laughs> and uh, probably lurk it, look into copywriting it quickly and all oh, that sure. kind of stuff, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because there's so many to times. Copyright it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Linda in Florida, it's good to see you, Linda. She says, "What jingle was your favorite of writing and composing?" There's the uh, one that stood out. Oh, uh, the one I did for the beef industry was was, was lots of fun. Do you, remember you, that? Do you remember that at all? It's called You Can Bet It's Beef Boy. No, I, I don't know it at the, at the piano, but um, it's called You Can Bet It's Beef Boy. <laughs> it was just a one note. That was it. Done. No, no, no. no I, I wouldn't even try to play Where's it. the beef? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it played around, you know, the whole country for, for a year or so. You know, that's great when that happens. I mean, sometimes you can have you know, something that lasts for years like that. Um, what about film scores? You know, sort of the, the John Williams type of stuff, the uh, mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer uh, oh. getting into the film world and scoring movies and things of that nature. Well, that's all great. I just haven't gone that route. I've stuck with <clears throat> writing musicals. Um, Is know, that something I, you would entertain if it... Uh, oh, sure. If somebody said, yeah, hey, we'd like you to score yeah, some of this yeah. or... I've just never, you know, gone out to Hollywood and tried, you know, tried that uh, that route. But I have friends, musical friends, composer friends from New York from years ago that did do that and have gone yeah. out to Hollywood and have done film, film scores. Yeah. I want to let the audience know we yeah. have uh, lots of music coming up for you here on the show. And uh, Tom's going to play live for us as well. We do have, I just want to show... Uh, maybe you can take us through some of this uh, excitement here. We've got some really cool photos tied to some of the work. And uh, maybe mm -hmm. you can take us through some of it. A lot of things that you've been involved in and responsible for. And then we've got some great music coming up. And if you're just joining us, everybody, we're approaching the 9 o'clock hour live on the Gym Master Show live. The JMS Network, Lovety Hall, Gym Masters here, your host, Tom Tierney, live from tucked away in a secluded location in Northwest <laughs> New Jersey, between the borders of New York and Pennsylvania, somewhere amongst the maple trees. He is there for his weekend. Um, this one here, you're talking about this, and I know this is right. uh, near and dear to your heart. 
tell us about this some more. And well, sure. Okay. Well, this is a musical I've been working on uh, with Jeffrey Haddow, who's my co-author. He's the writer of the script, and we both I do the music and we do lyrics together. By by Skype, we did mostly by Skype. Now Zoom. But anyway, yeah, um, right. This this music. The last time this, we heard Zoom, it was the TV show on PBS for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Got to zoom a zoom a zoom a zoom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, this uh, this musical is based on uh, a novel, The Evelyn Danielson, that became the film, a 1982 film that was a, a, right. a very successful film with yes. Mel Gibson, Sigourney Weaver, Linda Hunt, who won the Academy Award for yes. playing a male photojournalist. Right. Anyway, um, I remember seeing it, and when Jeff and I were looking for something to uh, to write together. I mentioned it. He said, ah, I love the idea. He had actually traveled in, to Indonesia. This takes place in Indonesia. It was 1965, and uh, it, it was against the backdrop of, of revolution, and these three characters, uh, Guy Hamilton, who was played by Mel Gibson. Uh, he was a, a reporter from Australia um, with a nose for news, is what is how Jeff yes, to describe Yes, I used to use that um, phrase a lot, a nose for news. Yeah. Jill Bryant uh, was played by Sigourney Weaver in the movie. Uh, she's a very attractive, independent. She's an attache at the British Embassy in Jakarta. She's wary of men having lost having uh, you know, loved and lost too many times. And then there's Billy Kwan. Uh, the, the, uh, he's a fearless, intensely idealistic Australian Chinese photojournalist. And he and uh, Hamilton become a team. Um, and they become a very successful team of you know, writer, uh, photographer. And the, the three, they're, but they're, it's like a, uh, it's like a love triangle in a way between the three of them. Yeah. As, as the relationships build and collide with uh, the political thing that's going on, because we're, we're against the backdrop of a revolution that happens it's actually at the end of our musical. But uh, we, we, we say it, uh, it explodes in a political turmoil, turmoil leading to a, a climax that's rife, I'm, I'm reading this now, rife with danger, <laughs> romance, and tragedy. <laughs> You need that so, deep movie so it's, trailer it's, it's, voice to you know, say that, right? It, it's <laughs> a, uh, you know, it's a serious musical. It has a lot, has fun moments in it, and the characters are wonderful. But it has a lot of, you know, it's called The Year of Living Dangerously, and yeah. uh, there's yeah. a lot of danger that happens throughout the musical. Mm. Yeah. So, a, yeah. a lot of the folks are asking, do you sing? <laughs> I do sing, yes. <laughs> yes, they, yes. Yeah. So, Linda and Merlin, you've got your answers. Yes, he sings as well. And uh, Maureen in Arizona, do you have a favorite work of art that you've written? That's probably tough, right? Because uh, it's almost like, do you have a favorite child? Um, there's probably several, but is there anything that... Um... Yeah, I would say yes. I think the musical Narnia, which is based on The Lion, the Wish, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, um, it was commissioned by a dramatic publishing company out of uh, Illinois. And I had never even heard of it, yeah. uh, but but once I read the story, I said, "Oh my gosh, this story is made to be a musical." And so uh, Ted Drachman, the lyricist, and Jules Tosca, the book writer, and I started work on it, and it just became a labor of love. I just, yeah, you know, the, the the music, the lyrics, it just flowed. Um, that's at least that's my recollection of it, and I'm very happy with uh, with it. Um, so. <laughs> Very nice. Since, since someone asked. <laughs> yeah, Maureen in Arizona had asked that. Yeah. Uh, we also have, I want to show a couple more because, again, you, you've had an opportunity in your illustrious career to work on so many great projects. Here's another. I, don't, I mentioned this earlier. Oh, yeah. This is really something. Tell us about this one. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, Eleanor is, is about the young lives of Eleanor and Franklin Roosevelt. It starts with... Uh, with her as a young girl. And uh, she, Eleanor, we, it's funny, we were approached originally by Theodore Chiosa to write, to write a show about Franklin Roosevelt. But the more we looked at Franklin, the more we, we looked at Eleanor, we found out that she really had all the things to overcome. Problems, many problems. Yeah. She was orphaned at a young age. Yeah. Um, 
she fell in love with Franklin. He fell in love with her. Yeah. And she she inherited a very difficult mother-in-law, Sarah Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah. And uh, her father, you know, had died. Her father was a hero to her. Anyway, the show uh, takes us through um, her their marriage, and then the difficulties of their marriage. Uh, we see the, the children coming along and so forth and so on. And then he begins to um, you know, rise up in politics, and she helps him with that. And finally, um, he, he, is, he becomes the secretary, the associate, assist, assistant secretary of the Navy in Washington. And uh, Eleanor needs a social secretary because they were so busy with all the you know, invitations they were getting in Washington and all the po political people they were meeting and so forth. So she hires a woman, Lucy Mercer, so that who was, they became, Eleanor and Lucy became very friendly and she helped Eleanor immensely. But there was a problem. Franklin at one point fell in love with Lucy Mercer. <laughs> so it became a real problem. And that's, in a sense, that's what the show is about, is how Eleanor and Franklin dealt with that. Um, he was in love with her. Uh, Sarah Roosevelt, his mother, said, you know, if you divorce, uh, I'm going to basically disown you. And then his political advisor, Louis House, said, you know, if you divorce, you probably are going to give up your political career. Because in those days, uh, back in the 30s, you know, it was that was considered much more of a scandal in you know, a divorce for, for a politician. Oh yeah, absolutely. So so anyway, but what happens is they they stay together in a kind of a different sort of relationship, and then he gets polio, so she nurses him through polio, and actually encourages him over a period of a few years to get back into politics. He he resists, he resists, he resists. She finally convinces him to nominate uh, Smith. Wow, for other, I'm sorry, for president, for and that president, was his right. Yeah, so he, he makes this announcement that there was a, a national, went national, and uh, and then he then becomes that she kind of convinces him to face his, you know, his disability, his handicap, and run for governor of New York. So that's a, and at that meantime, she has gone out and been his legs and his ears, and she's gone and given speeches. And finally, it turns out that people are asking for her and not for him. So oh, the yeah, show, right. she, she becomes triumphant at the end of the, of the musical. So it's, Eleanor has played in many theaters around the country. Oh, in fact. You have something there? We, yeah, yeah we, we put out an original cast album. <laughs> Eleanor, an American love story, an old love story. <laughs> Is that on this Amazon was, or Barnes and Noble places where people can get it? Um, I believe it's on Amazon. Um, if people want it right now, it was on CD Baby. So actually, you can go to CD Baby. Um, but they are actually, they closed the retail store. So I think you can go through Amazon and other sources. Go through Amazon. Or, 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 or send me an email and, and I'll make sure you get one. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, they can uh, send them to our show and then, yeah, we can forward that on. We have a okay. we have a great video here. Uh, the Age of Information. Einzel, tell us about this. Oh, sure. OK. Well, because I've done work for AT&T and so forth, they came to me when they were building Epcot Center. AT&T, I don't know if you remember, they, you know, the big spheres you go into Epcot Center. Yes. For those who have been there. That was yeah. AT&T's kind of headquarters there at Epcot Center. When you came out of that ride in the sphere, yeah. you went to something called FutureCon, and they had a wall there. And they, they hired a sculptor, a folk sculptor, Walter Einsell, to design um, the age of information. And they wanted this to represent all the things that were coming along in the future, all the new things that were coming on, along in, in communications. So you're talking about voicemail, you're talking about all the things we're doing today that yeah. nobody had heard of them. Yeah. So they were, they gave me all this background. Kind so of like the 64 to... <laughs> World's Fair and those types yeah, exactly. of things. Yeah, exactly. So I said, so write a song about it and, and then we want this song to accompany Walter Einsell's sculpted wall. 
So I did. I wrote I wrote the song, and um, you know, and then a few just a few years ago, it, let's, let's say it started in 1982, and I played there for 10 years, 144 times a day. At Epcot Center, <laughs> Epcot at Center, Walt, Walt Disney World in Florida. Wow. At Walt Disney, yeah. And it's funny because when I went to visit there a year or so later, after the opening, uh, the AT and T people who were manning the exhibit. He said, you realize that your song is driving us crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I had, to, had to listen to it 144 it's times. A probably day. like the ones that worked in the It's a Small World exhibit. Yeah, was, that was kind of, world. yeah, that, that song was kind of an inspiration. But it gave you a positive, yeah, I mean, right, yeah. you felt good. Here is the age of information. Uh, so here we go, folks, uh, from yours truly, Tom Tierney. We're taking you now to the Epcot Center in Walt Disney World without you having to leave your living room. <laughs> the power of technology on the Gym Master Show Live. Now mom and dad and junior can own smart telephone it's amazing all the things it can do as it brings the world closer to you you can sit right there in your easy chair and check the stock report on a screen at home make plans to roam to your favorite ski resort it'll bring the world Wonderful change coming, a beautiful day dawning, a miracle we're seeing come true. Cause the age of information is sweeping across the nation and bringing the world closer to you. It'll call the cops on a robber. Send your heartbeat clear across town. It'll give you all kinds of freedom. Like when you want to go shopping, it'll bring the store to your front door. It's the handiest thing around. And it brings the world closer to you. And it's making the world better. It's making the world smaller. It's giving the world is sweeping across the nation and bringing the world closer to you. Now the miracles have only begun in the places where our business gets done. And only the data you need And the words are moving And the mail is moving With the electronic speed You will talk to two or quite a few On a teleconference call And the chips are soaring And the data's moving On a thread of glass so small As it brings the world And your words are moving and the wires are humming a song And the world is changing and the country's changing So won't you come along On this wondrous journey to the information age There's a wonderful change coming A beautiful day dawning A miracle we're seeing come true Cause the age of information 
sunshine and bringing the world closer to closer you. Closer to you, closer to you, bringing the world, bring the world closer to you. That was damn good. I love that. I love music like that. That makes you feel so good. Boy, if I worked there, I would be singing that all day long, even if I heard it 144 times. Oh, well, thank I love you. the harmony. I love all of it. The arrangement, the lyrics, the harmony, the warmth, the feeling. I love that choral group sound, that harmonious choral mm -hmm. group sound. That certain, it's got that idealistic positivity to it that I've always, uh, you know, gravitated towards. That's a very positive song. It's a very hopeful song. It's exciting how right they were with all those predictions. Uh, kudos to you. I mean, that, was, that was fantastic. I loved I mean, it. You know, they spent quite a bit of time giving me all this information about the things they were developing. Yes. And it's interesting now that I see it again. I mean, the things that we're using now that yes. seem almost new. <laughs> and you put it to music and song. You know, I want to uh, show you what people yeah. are saying. The Lovities. Linda in Florida says, incredible. Dana saying, we are in the presence of a genius. I concur. Sherry <sighs> Larson in Kansas says, wow. Uh, Dawn agrees about the positivity. Yes, it does, Jim. Um, Merlin and Carrick and Canada says very cute and interesting. Mary in Florida says, what a fun video. Loved it. Maureen in Arizona says, now that was one fu fun flashback. Loved it. Toby <laughs> Simmons in uh, Encino, California says, wow. June says, amazing how right they were. Austin Field says, very cool video. Uh, I have always enjoyed going to Epcot. That is Linda, and I'm sure she's probably heard that over the years. June says, boy, that brings me back to that time. I was at the Epcot Center. Uh, Dawn says, cool. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, it just makes you feel good. It just makes you feel really, really good. And well, I wanted, to, I wanted to write something that, you yeah, know, that had that feel that you're talking about, but it was kind of folksy. You know, uh, yeah, kind of, it had that kind of, sort of, uh, um, yeah. yeah, slightly, you know, Western country, a little bit yeah. of that in it. Let but we had that, right. It was exactly. great orchestrator, Billy the Plank. Um, and were they we had, uh, just session hmm. singers or was that part yes. of the whole? Yeah, yeah. They were session singers that I had worked with quite a bit on other yeah. projects. And because we had a good budget, I was able to bring in six singers. But then they would usually we would overdub the choral stuff maybe two a couple of times so we had like you know 18 voices on the choral stuff it's the best yeah. it's like the right kind of singers yeah. Yeah. But i had some great soloists marlene replank was married to the orchestra she yeah. did the, some of those solos and marty nelson was the primary solo guy solos i used him many 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 times you ever hear the ron hicklin singers they were used for a lot of jingles they did yeah. Uh, oh my God, they did the, they sang Love American Styles theme. They were the backup mm -hmm. singers for the Partridge family, for mm -hmm. the Monkees. They yeah. were the singers used by Ray Conniff for the Ray Conniff singers uh -huh. when he changed the singers to a more, that sort of youthful, modern 70s yeah. sort of warm sound. Uh, they were used a lot too. There, there's some really fabulous lesser known musicians and session singers out oh, yeah. there that oh, when yeah. they come together like that, I mean, Alessandra in North Car Carolina says she can listen to that all day. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Alessandra well, says, love it. Wow, yeah. thank you from Joan. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, they, these singers, I mean, as I said, they, had, they all had done a lot of work for me on other projects, but uh, they, they actually would go from you know, session to session all day long. I mean, they, they'd be doing a, an album with Frank Sinatra one minute, and then they'd be doing a jingle for Campbell's Soup, you know, uh, an hour later or you know, whatever. I mean, I just remember exactly. booking them and they'd be going off and doing, spending all day. And that was a different era. I don't think 
singers are that busy now. That was but, a different but, time, but, right? Exactly. Yeah. And voiceover announcers were the same thing. They would go from this to that to this to that, and uh, definitely, like you said, sure. a different time for sure. Um, the, the other thing, Jim, that's interesting is that they would come in. They had never seen the music or heard it to the session, and they, you know, I'd go to the piano, I'd play it for them, the melody once or twice. They were such great readers. They got it right. I mean, away. within 15 minutes or so, they'd be at the microphone and we'd be getting final takes on a lot of it you know, because they were just that good at reading music and then getting yeah. the, the right vibe, you know? Yeah, yeah, automatically. And the voices, there's you got to have that blend of the perfect, you know, the harmonious sound. And they, they blended perfectly. The male singer in the beginning, the female singer, and then the rest of the group coming sweeping in. Yeah. Uh, and it builds. It, it starts yeah. off slow, and then it builds to a nice crescendo. Yeah. Um, you heard you heard the bass guy singing, you know, send your heart beat clear across town. <laughs> yeah, right. he was. Uh, it's Chuck Magruder. He and his wife. She was a high soprano. He was a low bass. They and, they they literally went from session to session. You know, and that oh, they were they were they were actually on the uh, Perry Como show. They were they were on the singers. Perry Como show as well. Yeah, as well as Ed Sullivan. So it's they did so both. Funny. The jingle singing, you know, the and then, studio singers, as well as that was you know, the best. Um, yeah, the, the yeah. TV stuff, <clears throat> the great gigs, uh, absolutely, um, really, really fantastic stuff. We have also something else here we want to share. Now, this uh, comes to us from you as well, and this is coming of the rains. Tell us about this one. Oh, okay, sure. All right. Well, this is um, this is part of the story of the the year of living dangers. Um, it's, it's a, so Guy Hamilton, the, the, you know, the reporter from Australia, he's injured, uh, covering a demo, covering a demonstration at the American embassy, Jill Bryant, the girl, uh, who was the Sigourney Weaver in the movie, anyway, she drives the embassy car. She, she's diverted around a disturbance, ends up in Guy's office as his wounded leg is being dressed. She offers to take guy back to the hotel but guy says why don't we drive to a deserted wharf um as the as the first wave of the monsoon rains are about to sweep in from the sea so the scene sets up this intense attraction between the two of them uh, despite the fact they're they're both ultra wary of a romantic involvement but this is sort of the moment that seals their uh their, their relationship their love affair that's fantastic. It's another great uh, piece from uh, Tom Tierney, uh, award-winning composer and lyricist. And again, uh, coming of the rains, folks, enjoy this. And we will continue. We have uh, much more, including some uh, live music with Tom as well in his secluded mm -hmm. rendezvous in Northwest <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> All right, a secret location. All right, here we go, gang. Enjoy. Billy continues to maneuver Guy and Jill together. And when Guy is injured during a demonstration, Jill offers to drive him back to the hotel. Guy suggests another location, and they soon find themselves on a deserted Jakarta wharf. You like it here? I come here to escape the heat, the noise. You said there was a bar around here. Oh, there is. Where? Right here. Shay Hamilton. <laughs> How's your leg? Oh, I live. Hmm. I like to look at the ships. Me too. I wish I was on one of them. Going somewhere clean and safe, like Singapore. Uh, the Raffles Hotel. The Singapore Sling. Sounds good. Don't. Oh, God. What's going on? I thought the monsoon wasn't supposed to arrive for another month. Sometimes we get a sneak preview. <laughs> How I wish that we could go away. Just get on a ship and stow away. To a place where no one's listening at the door. To a free and easy paradise like sunny Singapore. Can he feel the rapid pulse? A 
blood is coursing through my veins, moving through my helpless body like the coming of the rains. Is she all adrift like me, swept away by this monsoon? Does she feel the churning power of a wave that's breaking all too soon? Am I losing control? Am I going insane? From, From the, the lashing and the pounding of the pouring rain? Never cooling off or letting up. There's no relief in sight. We'll be both regret it if we let it carry us away tonight. <laughs>right there it holds at their longest <laughs> kiss were they in a kissing contest <laughs> that is funny so it's sometimes catching up when, yeah it's catching up that's what it is sometimes when you when you have to play them manually that's sort of what happens but that's a nice shot there <laughs> It's everybody put, interested. Put another nickel in, folks, uh, and you'll get to see the rest. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Well, I guess that's all we're going to see of that one. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. See, when you do them manually, it's very it's it's like playing MP3s. It doesn't cycle through all the way. It's a lot. Uh -huh. The other one that we I played see. was able to be downloaded directly and uploaded directly. But when you play mm -hmm. them manually, it's there's like a separation in between and Oh, Everything has okay. to be, it's got to be gelled perfectly. So mm -hmm. you got a little taste of that one, folks. <laughs> you don't know what Tom mm -hmm. and I went through today to try to get all of this uh, to work perfectly <laughs> with these videos. There was all yeah. these different formats. Um, but we do have more, but wait, there is more. Uh, just like the late infomer infomercial legendary host Ron Popeil used to say, who passed away about a what a week ago but wait there's more <laughs> uh we've got another one here we want to share with you guys we've got lots of great ones here let's see what we've got let's see what the magic trick is here for us we're doing this all manually on the spot not quite what it's like when i'm at the tv network <laughs> it's usually seven other people doing this uh this one is Let's see what it says. The font is small. <laughs> I created you version oh, two. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Tell us about oh. this one, Tom. Okay. Um, so what happened, this is toward the end of the show. Um, Jill Bryant, she breaks up with God because he betrays her by breaking news, news story about arms shipping. And she told him in confidence. Pete Curris, a fellow newsman, tries to cheer Guy up by inviting him to a cemetery where the local ladies of the evening congregate. This scene disgusts Guy, and he runs to Billy's bungalow to try to make it up with him. But Billy can't forgive Guy for what he did to Jill and for not being the hero he imagined him to be. Yeah. So it's basically showing Billy's upset, upset with, with Guy. Okay. And it's, yeah. All right. Enjoy this one, folks. More music coming your way, and Tom's going to play live for us as well. Here we go. Sort of like that train. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, these are tough ones to try to play manually. Yeah, they're like, uh oh. Yeah, they don't. They don't seem to want to play in this way. Let's give this one another shot. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's jump to this one that's sitting here idling, waiting. Um, let's see what we got here. It's tough when they're when they're done manually. Um, Let's see. And they're such big files, like you said. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. I think, what it was. All right. Let's see what we got here. This one is. 
you could do worse. <laughs> okay. Version two. Let's see. Right, this you, one. you want to know what you don't want to know what this is about? Let's see. You know what? I think what happens is it needs to. Let's see. Just hit it. I just want to hit it first and see if it if it plays Look. through. Okay. So it's what it is. Is it's uh, queuing up. So while it queues up, you can tell us about it, and maybe it'll catch up to itself. The files okay. are so big that it's uh, very, right. very large for the system to try to filter it through. But maybe you can tell us about it, and maybe sure. it'll sure. queue up as we're doing that. Yeah, in, in this scene, um, Jill works for Colonel Henderson. Oh, we'll just have, we have you do them all live. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I don't have the music in front. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she works for Colonel Henderson at the British Embassy, and she's just intercepted a communique in code revealing the Chinese have sent a shipment of arms to Jakarta, and uh, which is the uh, for the PKI, which is the Indonesian Communist Party. The scene establishes Colonel Henderson's feeling toward Jill, and uh, he offers her a solid, stable alternative to guys rakish unpredictability. <laughs> mm. That's basically what it's about. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring that up again and see if we can get this one going. There it goes, it's rolling. There the following go. day, Henderson's office at the British Embassy. Jill enters and says she's intercepted a message in code about a shipment of arms coming from China for the PKI. Henderson immediately goes on alert. Now listen, Jill. Things may come to a boil here rather soon, and I think you should have an exit plan. You really think it'll be that bad? Worse, perhaps. I've been through this sort of thing before, and it's never pretty. Be ready to book a flight. I'll put in a good word for you with the London office. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, wait, there's, um, there's something I've been meaning to speak with you about. Uh, you see... Uh, just this month, I bought a little cottage in Yarmouth. Sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Two fireplaces, roses on the terrace, oh. unobstructed view of the sea. Very nice. Near perfect, I'd say. <laughs> All at once, it was the right person to share it with. Are you proposing, Ralph? People may laugh and call me a square. Maybe I've stayed too long at the fair. I'm a fossil, famously set in my ways. Some say it's a curse, but trust me, you could do worse. I know I'm not a Hollywood star. And though the notion might seem bizarre, if you let me, I could become Mr. Right. Go out on a limb and choose me. I could be him. You will have a rich, rewarding life, as fine as the rarest Bordeaux. I'll make you proud to be my wife and give you the freedom to grow. I want you to know that. I can be tender, I can be kind Maybe I'm not what you had in mind But I need you And if I were more refined I'd put it in verse Believe me You could do worse Much worse Let's face it, you have Done worse But after some time with me, you might be surprised to see you've fallen in love. I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything. Just think about it. Yes. Yes, all right. And in the meantime, swallow that message. Aye, aye, sir. Fantastic. <laughs> that was great. Tell us, you want to tell us a little bit more about that one? Well, uh, that's sung by Simon Jones, who's a very, you know, very accomplished uh, Broadway performer, movie performer. He just yeah. recently played uh, 
King George in uh, the, the Downton Abbey movie. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He told us how he was terrified to ride the horse in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he's a friend of mine, but uh, he, he did, you know, he got some laughs in the song. <laughs> did a really nice job, too. Yeah, and yeah. Scarlett Strelin, uh, also, she played Mary Poppins on Broadway. That's right. Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Yes. She's quite, quite an accomplished singer, actress. Yeah, so. And we've got another one that's queued up here. And this one is Words and Pictures version two. Okay. You see, we want to know what this is about. Absolutely. This, is, this, this happens early, early in the, in the play. Guy has arrived in Jakarta. Uh, he's trying to make his mark as a journalist. He quickly learns um, that he knows very little about the territory. So Billy Kwan is the photojournalist who knows the beat like the back of his hand has many valuable connections. What he doesn't have is a partner who can supply copy for his photos and get the photos and stories out into the world. So this scene establishes the beginning of the guy, Billy Team, a successful partnership that provokes envy and jealousy in the other reporters that are in the, also in the song. And the song takes place over a period of time so that there are things that happen between verses to show their success. You know the headlines on the on the screen in the back uh, as they, you know, write and take pictures together and so forth. Nice. So their success builds during the song. So it builds during the song. All right, yeah. let's take a listen and enjoy, everybody. You can have the story. Oh, great! If you hire me as your cameraman. Uh, look, I don't know, Billy. I'd have to clear that with Sydney. No, you don't. You and I, old man, could be quite a team with the talent we have got. I'll provide the eyes, you provide the voice as we aim and take our shot. How about an interview with agents? You can do that? I can do it. A real sit down. Well, if you can do that, you got yourself a deal. Words and pictures, you're a hell of a writer, you're a whiz with a camera, so it's gotta be good. Words and pictures, tell a hell of a story, when they're working together, but they gotta be good, and they're gonna be good, yeah they're gonna be good. You and I, old man, gonna make some news Show the others what they lack With your eagle eyes And your mighty pen We are gonna lead the pack Words and pictures If you get a good angle If you ask the right questions Then it's gonna be good Son of a bitch, will you look at those guys? Now my boss is demanding I top up to hell now we'll all have to work and i'm betting that nothing will stop up guy and billy got another big story what the hell do we do now now we gotta be better than good you and i old man breaking all the news we're the ones who want their trust with your eagle eyes and your golden words tell the others eat our dust look at those guys they get all of the scoops now there's no far ahead we can't top them words and pictures, words and pictures. you're a hell of a writer you're a whiz with a camera Cause we're working together and we're doing it good son of a bitch better call in the troops nothing else in the world's gonna stop us you and me, I and Billy, tell a hell of a story. Got another big story. Cause we're working together. Cause they're working together. And we're doing it good. And they're doing it good. And we're doing it better and better and better and better and better and better than good. Nice. That's another great one, too. And everybody's saying they're commenting live. Love the music. That was great. I love when we have the opportunity to get the uh, live responses from the Lovities all around the world. 
Let's see what we got here. Love the music from Sherry, Jim Stanek, who was a guest on our show as well. June says, Jim, uh, that was great from Alessandra. Dawn says, lovely song and smiles from Alessandra in North Carolina. Just beautiful from Joan Sandow. Uh, all kinds of claps and thumbs up <laughs> from Jane in Sweden. And uh, Merlin in Canada also concurring with claps and Mona in Louisiana. Good to see you, Mona. That was beautiful. And uh, the song previous to this, Richard Roz says, every old guy can ID with this song. <laughs> Identify with that song. <laughs> Mary Bishop says that was wonderful. Love the song, good voices. Donna Rickler says, uh, the man can write. And Dawn says, uh, what a lovely song as well. Um, you wanted to grace us. Well, Mary says, fantastic. Christine Clifton says, really great video clips. June says, awesome. Good stuff, loveties. Um, you wanted to play something for us live while you were there and tickle the ivories a bit, huh? Sure, I can. Yeah, yeah we'd love that. And then uh, we'll, we've got a couple more videos we can set up while you're doing that as well. Uh, okay. What would you like to uh, share with us? Well, I thought I could play a song from Narnia, which I told you was one of my favorite shows that I've written. Um, it's, for those who don't know the story, it's try to be quick here. <laughs> it's about four school children during World War II in, in London who are sent away uh, from the city for safety. They, they go to their Uncle Diggory's country home. And when, there they travel through a, an old war road and discover the amazing land of Narnia, which is ruled by an evil white witch. Now, one of the children meets the white witch and falls under her spell after eating Turkish delight. They become involved in an epic battle of good versus evil, and they meet the great lion Aslan, a uh, former ruler who's come back to save the land. Um, this, this became a movie, a Disney movie, non-musical. <laughs> but uh, anyway... Uh, after the battles with the witches cruelly, they eventually triumph, I mean, the four children, and they become the kings and queens of Narnia. So this song is called To Make the World Right Again, which actually, even though it was written a while ago, seems to have a message of value today with what's going on in the world. But anyway, Aslan, the great lion, he sings this to the four children. This is near the end of the musical in response to their question about how best they could rule the land of Narnia. So uh, here it is to make the world right again. And this is Aslan. Fantastic. Now, the real adventure starts. A challenge that will truly test the best that's in your heart. Find the courage within and then begin to make the world right again. To make the world right. Worldly men will say to compromise that visions of a better world are fairy tales and lies. They may mock you with scorn, still you were born to make the world again, to make the world right. For a world that's grown old and bitter and cold has the seas of rebirth in its womb, and the Maybe sleeping instead to waken at last from its tomb. Dare to cast thy bread upon the sea. Have faith that it will be returned a hundredfold to thee. For if faith stays alive, hope. To make the world right again, to make the world right again, to make the world right again. To make the world right. 
Very nice. Very nice, my friend. Oh, thank I, you. Yeah. Hope you can hear the words. I know I'm playing loud. No, we <laughs> actually heard the words beautifully. Yeah. Did you? Good. I'm glad to hear Yeah. It. I know when we tested it, the piano was a little hot, but no, the uh, the <laughs> vocal was perfect. Thomas, this is so lovely. Mona loving it as well. And Mary sang fantastic. And uh, Dawn saying, wow, lovely job <laughs> as well. And uh, very, very nice, my friend, getting people oh, getting you, a you. really good sprinkling of uh, some of the amazing material, which is just absolutely awesome. Um, when you when you do you go into a certain zone when you're playing, when you're uh, performing, do you drift away to another place in time? I know a lot of people say that they do. Yeah, I I try to get into the character of who's singing, you know, uh, as well as, you know, try to, I try to sing it as good as I possibly can. But uh, in this case, it's, you know, the great lion Aslan giving them advice. Actually, the end of the, at the end of the song, the, the, the children join and the company joins and sings. So it becomes a choral piece at the end. But yes, I get into some, somewhat of a, <laughs> Maureen in Arizona says, I just love everything about this show. Thank you, Tom, for making my day. She works in Arizona as a nurse in the medical industry. So uh, uh -huh. you made her day after a rough day. Joan loves the music. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite movies. Kate uh, Barton is here. Welcome, Kate. Uh, hello from Texas. So oh, fun to oh, see my Uncle Tom in this, my niece. In, this, <laughs> in this format of the Gym Master Show Live. <laughs> Well, thanks, Kate. We love it. Kate's Hi, now Kate. a lovety. Kate is now a lovety, right? She's an official lovety. Right. She's always been a lovety to you. This, yeah, that's right. This becomes a family affair here. She's a gym master <laughs> show lovety, and I think that's absolutely uh, that is that is awesome. Good stuff. Um, so you know, so you do go into to a zone a little bit, huh? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we're going to give another shot with uh words and pictures volume two because so i think we might be able to uh get that going here so so we want i want everybody to see that one so let's uh let's see if we can uh bring that one up and give that uh video clip another chance to rise and shine <laughs> and uh and Kate says, love it. She absolutely loves it. That's perfect. We love to hear that. Welcome to the show, Kate. Uh, it's nice to have you on the Gym Master Show live. And here is uh, Words and Pictures, Volume 2. We'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> you can have some. Oh, great. If you hire me as your cameraman. Uh, look, I don't know, Billy. I'd have to clear that with Sydney. No, you don't. You and I, old man, could be quite a team with the talent we have got. I'll provide the eyes, you provide the voice as we aim and take our shot. How about an interview with Aidens? You can do that? I can do it. A real sit down. Well, if you can do that, you got yourself a deal. Words and pictures. You're a hell of a writer. You're a whiz with a camera. So it's gotta be good. Words and pictures tell a hell of a story. When they're working together. But they gotta be good. And they're gonna be good. Yeah, they're gonna be good. You and I, old man, gonna make some news Show the others what they lack With your eagle eyes And your mighty pen We are gonna lead the pack Words and pictures If you get a good angle If you ask the right questions Then it's gonna be good Son of a bitch, will you look at those guys? Now my boss is the man thing I top of to hell now we'll all have to work and i'm betting that nothing will stop up guy and billy got another big story what the hell do we do now 
Now we gotta be better than good. You and I, old man, breaking all the news. We're the ones who want their trust. With your ego lies and your golden words, tell the others he got us. Look at those guys, they get all of the scoops. Now they're so far ahead, we can't top them. Words and pictures, words and pictures. You're a hell of a rider. You're a whiz with a camera. Cause we're working together and we're doing, we're doing it good. Son of a bitch, better call in the troops. Nothing else than the world's gonna stop us. You and me, I and Billy, tell a hell of a story. Got another big story. Cause we're working together. Cause we're working together and we're doing it good. And they're doing it good. And we're doing it better and better and better and better and better and better than good. <laughs> we did a repeat, right? I was going to say encore, encore. If you uh, if you're not uh, woken up and alive hearing that, folks, you might have to check your pulse <laughs> to see if you're still breathing at all. <laughs> it is a really uh, you know it really gets it going. Yes, the uh, juice is flowing. Uh, we also have, this is the one we wanted to uh, resurrect here, Coming of the Rains, because that was the first one. Um, I'll play that here as well. And again, in case anybody joined late, because we have people tuning in all hours here, uh, tell us again about this one for anybody that joined us late, Tom. So, Coming of the Rains, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Guy Hamilton, the, the reporter from uh, Australia, he is injured covering a, covering a demonstration. And Jill Bryant, um, she's driving the embassy car. She's diverted around a disturbance, and ends up in Guy's office as his wounded leg, his wounded leg is being dressed. She offers to take Guy back to the hotel, but Guy suggests they drive to a deserted wharf as the first wave of a monsoon rain is about to sweep in from the sea. So this scene sets up and intensifies the attraction between Guy and Jill, despite the fact that they both really are ultra wary of our romantic involvement. But this really actually gets the romance going. This gets the romance going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Coming of the Rains by Tom Tierney. Here we go, gang, and enjoy. Billy continues to maneuver Guy and Jill together. And when Guy is injured during a demonstration, Jill offers to drive him back to the hotel. Guy suggests another location, and they soon find themselves on a deserted Jakarta war. You like it here? I come here to escape the heat, the noise. You said there was a bar around here. Oh, there is. Well, where? Right here. <laughs> Shay Hamilton. <laughs> How's your leg? Oh, I live. I like to look at the ships. Me too. I wish I was on one of them. Going somewhere clean and safe, like Singapore. Uh, the Raffles Hotel. The Singapore Sling. Sounds good. Don't. Oh, God. What's going on? I thought the monsoon wasn't supposed to arrive for another month. Sometimes we get a sneak preview. <laughs> I wish that we could go away Just get on a ship and stow away To a place where no one's listening at the door To a free and easy paradise like sunny Singapore Can he feel the rapid pulse? That is coursing through my veins, moving through my helpless body like the coming of the rains. Is she all adrift like me, swept away by this monsoon? Does she feel the churning power of a wave that's breaking all too soon? 
Am I losing control? Am I going insane? From, from the, the lashing and the pounding of the pouring rain? Never cooling off or letting her off. There's no relief in sight. We'll be both regret it if we let it carry us away to Will it float us off the pier? Take us round about Sumatra to an Eden far from here. But when white heart passions burn, there is only here and now. Every fiber of my being cries, stop. But God knows how, when we're caught up in the drumming, swept up by the clubbing of the Yes, we made it past the kiss. We made it past that kiss. Say good things come to those who wait. We had that planned to only tease you when we tried to play it the first time, stopped right at the kiss, moved on to some other chit chat, and then brought it back and finished the kiss. <laughs> That's what you call a real segue. <laughs> sure. Uh, was there something else you wanted to uh, do live for us while you're there, Tom? Oh, uh, sure, I can. Um, yeah. There's Take another that. song from <laughs> from Narnia. You know, the, the the White Witch there, the white, the evil White Witch, is declared yeah. it should be uh, always winter, but never Christmas. So what happens is, as the show moves on, and, and Aslan makes his appearance in in Narnia, suddenly we find out that uh, that Father Christmas. Um, is, is, is actually making making an appearance in Narnia. He's coming to give the, the children special gifts. So when Father Christmas arrives, uh, he sings this song uh, called At Last It's Christmas because for, for many, many moons there has not been a Christmas in Narnia. So here's, here's the, the song that this is Father Christmas uh, singing and the children join in. Oh, fantastic. Tom Tierney on the Jim Master Show Live. Though it may seem it's been winter forever, and you feel numb from the snow, even to dream seems a useless endeavor, and hope burns low. For joy, at last it's Christmas. Wake the frozen countryside, warm them with the gladsome news. At last it's Christmas time. Joy, for joy, at last it's Christmas. Share the feast with beasts and men. Hang the stockings and wrap the presents. Christmas, it's Christmas again. Really nice, really nice. Really, 
I love that. And I, I'm a big Christmas music person. I have, uh, <laughs> I've got a climate controlled storage bin we pay monthly for that has thousands of records, CDs, reel to reel tapes, cassettes, and there's a ton of Christmas music. That's fantastic. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Really well done, my friend. And you know, whenever you hear that kind of melody and you hear the joy in that, like Maureen says, bring on Christmas. It just, there's something about Christmas music that makes you feel good. It really just makes you feel good. And it's probably uh, kind of fun to have a little Christmas in August here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's Christmas on JMS Live. Um, <laughs> have you done, have you toyed with more Christmas music uh, at all or just these pieces for these specific productions? Because uh, that was great. Really, it was just uh, because. In the story, Father Christmas does appear, and we thought, let's have him have a song. And then, of course, the children join in, and they're singing yeah. along with him, repeating Really stuff, nice. You know, so forth. But no, I haven't written, I don't, have I written other Christmas songs? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check the archive, right? <laughs> Mona in Louisiana says, love it, love that piano. <laughs> Uh, Dawn says, fantastic. Mary says, that was wonderful. Maureen oh, says, you. bring on Christmas. Uh, June says so romantic. She's loving it as well. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, it just makes you feel, it puts you in a good spirit and good mood. And we certainly, you know, with everything we've been through in the last 17, 18 months with pandemics yes. and everything else, right. we need a lot of feel good stuff, don't we? And people have I'm been sure turning you know. to, they've been turning to nostalgia. They've been turning to music and, and old movies and comedy and tv shows and the arts to uh shows like this which i'm blessed that they do um to get through it all and to uh to help us to the other side of uh, a horrific situation right mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly i agree with you have you dealt with it all how have you dealt with uh you know, the, the stoppage, the slowage of things, and just this whole new uh, world we're, we're living in and through together. I, you know, I've been fortunate, I've been fine. Uh, you know, it's been an opportunity to actually do work on my, on my music and actually, you know, on my marketing uh, of, of my music. I'm working with a company out in Montana called Open Sky Artists um, to help me. Uh, you know, get word out about some of these musicals that people haven't heard about. Yeah, absolutely. And we're so glad that, you know, we're able to help in that vein here on our show as well. Uh, a few more photos I just want to run through because, again, you've had so many things you've been a part of and continue to, uh, to be a part of Tom, who is mm -hmm. in his secret, secluded, hidden location in New Jersey, <laughs> northwestern New Jersey. <laughs> He's okay. in a bunker. He's in a hidden bunker somewhere, <laughs> but it's soundproof. It is soundproof. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully. Here we go. Tell us oh, yeah. about this one. Ah, yes. A Diamond in the North Wind. Uh, this is a musical. I've been working with uh, Jeff Haddo, or the same writer that I'm working with on You're Very Dangerously. I've been working on this for, for a while, actually. Uh, it's based on a 19th century family classic novel by George MacDonald. Uh, it's the story of Diamond, a poor stable boy who's befriended by the North Wind. The North Wind is this beautiful, mysterious being that takes Diamond on flying adventures uh, that, that, that teach him important lessons which he'll need to, uh, to lead the horse cabbies of Livery Row in New York in their battle with a powerful villain who's determined to destroy the carriage trade in New York. Anyway, this novel was very popular in the late 1800s. Um, we've updated the time and locale from the, uh, from the Dickensian London to Depression, Depression era New York. <laughs> so there have been several readings in New York and so forth and so on. But uh, we have a theme song. Did, did you want me to play the theme song? That would be fantastic. Love to hear <laughs> that. Absolutely. Yeah. This is... It's called, the show's called Diamond of the North Wind. It's based on the novel at the back of the North Wind. So we wrote this thing. We actually first wrote this as a film script for like a Disney animated type of film. Uh, but then uh, it took us a while to sell it that way. So we said, let's make this a, a real stage musical. But anyway, this is a theme song. First time for everyone. 
What are some what are some of the things that inspire you? Uh, I mean, you know, you're you're obviously an observer of life, but there has to be various things that inspire you to be able to write beautiful music like that, Tom. Well, I think you know things from the heart, things that make you feel good, things that are you know romantic things, um, things you know goodness. But of course, with what I do, you know, I have to. I have to write, um, you know, in so many different styles and different characters. Some of the characters are mean, you know, so you, you have to write for those too. But, uh, you know, in answer to your question, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's the upbeat from the heart kind of stuff that really interests me the most. And that's what it is from the heart. Absolutely. Uh, we're getting more wonderful comments coming in. We welcome everybody. If this is your first time watching our entertainment lifestyle talk show series. I'm your host, Jim Masters. We do this live daily at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We've done about 440 episodes live, and they're all right here on our YouTube channel. And those of you watching on our YouTube channel for the first time, we would love it if you subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you'll know when we have great shows like this and surprise pop-up shows and so much more. Uh, we've got a very busy weekend of episodes. Tomorrow, Saturday, we have two shows uh, with one guest, a brilliant singer coming in live from Australia tomorrow night and uh, another busy weekend. I want to so show you some of the amazing comments coming in. Dawn says, Tom, you made my day because we remember Dawn started out not feeling so good when she, oh. you know, tuned in. Her day was rough. Now she feels better. That's great, Dawn. 
Tom, you clearly have a passion for what you do, and it comes through loud and clear in your music from Maureen. Carol says, thank you, Tom. We've always loved your music and your friendship. And oh, says, in Illinois, as always, love all of my brother's music. <laughs> That's your sister, my sister, right? My sister here, yes. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yes, welcome. A big lovety welcome from all of us at the Gym Masters <laughs> show live. Anne and everybody, family back there in Illinois. Um, Dawn says, God bless you. Uh, glad to meet you, Tom. And Joan says, thank you, Thomas, for a wonderful evening. Uh, the Christmas music helps us feel cooler in August. Great song, especially in, it's been a little hot in Kansas where, uh, where she is. <laughs> um, so uh, nice to see everybody and all the new faces here uh, on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Share the lovely, tell everybody about our show. And of course, this prized possession here. Tell us again about this, uh, Tom. Oh, about Narnia. Well, yeah. this, is, uh, this is a show that's, uh, as I said, it is, it's very much, you know, one of my favorite pieces. Um, it's based on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, it was originally commissioned by the Dramatic Publishing Company. I'd, I'd never even heard of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Right. This back in, this was back in like 1982 because it was written, you know, uh, for, for kids. It was not like part of my generation, you know. Right. <laughs> so, but anyway, when he read the book, we, I fell in love with it. And, uh, so uh, you know, it's a, you know it's about the four school children in London who were sent away for safety during World War II. Yeah, and uh, how they go through a wardrobe and discover Narnia. It's ruled by the evil White Witch. So um, eventually, the great lion Aslan comes back and helps the children. You know, actually defeat the White Witch, and they become victorious. They become the kings and queens of Narnia. Kings and queens. That's fantastic. Writing for children is uh, something quite special too, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, I've actually done quite a bit of uh, I know. work for young, for young audiences. Um, and do you enjoy it? I do enjoy it, yeah, sure. It's, uh, so, do you become a kid again as you're doing it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's important not to write down to kids. I mean, right, write, you don't want to write you down. Write, exactly. you know, you, but you want to write something they'll understand that's clear yes. to them. You know, uh, exactly. So, yep. Got another one here we want to show. Lots and lots of great things here. Now, this is something special. Zach. Oh, oh Zach Hill and the Rocket Blaster Man adventure. <laughs> <laughs> this is a show I've been working on for a few years with. Werner Trishman, who's from Little Rock, Arkansas. It's based on a comic strip by John Deering and John Newcomb uh, that runs in newspapers around the country. Um, it's about this, uh, this kid, this nine-year-old kid, who basically doesn't want to grow up. And his, his, he has a problem because he lives with his widowed mother, Jan, um, in a boarding house full of eccentric characters. Uh, there's a Mrs. Belmont, a cranky older woman, who menaces, menaces him with a hairbrush. There's a there's a hermit that lives behind the door called Mr. Grumbine, and there's a, a couple of bachelor guys who are opposite opposite uh, Vincent Carl, and then he has school friends. Um, anyway, uh, it's it's a fun it's a fun show. It's kind of like Annie in a way. You know? Yeah, right. Um, it was recent, just this year. Recently, was presented at the Florida Festival of New Musicals in Winter Park, the Winter Park Playhouse. Winter Park Playhouse. Winter Park, yeah. Florida. And sure. uh, so actually the North Wind show was there a couple of years ago as well, and part of their Festival of New Musicals. And they choose six musicals and do readings. Uh, and uh, so we, I was just there actually to see, see the reading uh, in June, and it was a, a great experience. They, they, and they, because they're close to Orlando, they can cast the wonderful you know, uh, show business folks who work all in around Orlando, exactly. you know, for Disney and for Universal and all these other uh, great, great uh, companies down there. Absolutely. Here's another so, one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jungle Queen debutante. I describe this as uh, <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark meets Dames at Sea. <laughs> this is really a, a fun, a fun piece. It's a uh, my collaborator, Sean O'Donnell, described this as girl loves boy, 
girl loses boy, girl goes to the jungle to find boy and becomes the jungle queen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's set in the 50s and uh, uh, it's about a debutante, Sarah Westwood, who has to say goodbye to her archeologist boyfriend, you know, Richard Duvall, as he goes off to Peru in search of the lost city of Viracocha. <laughs> He's captured by a jungle queen there and she has a mysterious emerald that causes him to lose his memory. So he becomes Buona Rick, and as Buona Rick, he meets Bangle Jolie, glamorous jungle chanteuse. And so everybody ends, in the show ends up in the jungle, include, including Sarah's beloved Aunt Norris <laughs> and her wow. former wartime lover, Sinclair Alcone, who's now the, wow. and the American ambassador to Peru. And of course, there's Dominic Zeppeli, a small time good with dreams of stealing and selling the queen's strange <laughs> emerald. And there you have it, Jungle Queen debutante. And fun, there you a have it. A fun show, a really fun yeah. show. That was produced by the Village Theater out of Seattle. And uh, they do a great job. It's in, it actually in Issaquah, just a few miles out of Seattle. And they, they produ they've produced a lot of my shows. Narnia, they've done a lot, yeah. Is, yes, they have. They're great. That's a great shot. What a great angle, too, in front of the grand there. Oh, thank you. That's, that's my a, office. That's the office. And then yes, this one, yes. we showed this in the introduction. That's the office as well. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Very nice. And who's this lovely lady you're with? That's my wife, Maureen. Yes. Who's got me, got me through all of this. <laughs> uh, she's gotten you through all of it. I love the way all you say of that. Yes, she's, yes. Have you written a song for Maureen yet? Well, I've written a lot of songs with her as the inspiration. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, were, were you traveling so, to a uh, beautiful background there? Where were you guys for this? We, we were actually in Portugal, and that was 2016. Uh, we did, a, we did a, a kind of our own tour of Portugal, Lisbon. And here we were on the Douro Dor uh, River. We took yeah. a day tour uh, where we could taste some of the port wines and all the, you know, the wineries along, along, along nice. the river. It was great. great There's spot. a couple more here. Um, pets. A new musical. Tell yes. us about this one. Yeah, Pets is a review. Uh, wrote it actually with 17 other writers. Uh, Helen Butleroff is the director uh, who pulled the whole thing together. Played it, played off Broadway twice. And it's really a fun show uh, about people and their pets and pets and their people. <laughs> <laughs> pets yeah. are people too. <laughs> there yeah. was a whole, you know, I, I forgot where that came from. There was a show or there was something. Because I remember everybody saying that pets are people too. You know, I don't know if there was a song <laughs> or is a kid's show or something where they would, they'd say yeah. that phrase all the time. Kind of yeah. like I'm a pepper, you're a pepper. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Susan B. Oh, Susan B. Okay. This was originally written for Theater Works USA about Susan B. Anthony, yeah. uh, about her, her, uh, striving to get the, the women the right to vote you know mm -hmm. she was a yes quite the strider you know? very and, uh, important written with the same team that i wrote narnia with uh, in fact it was very shortly after we wrote that show that the uh, people who had the rights to uh, the language and wardrobe came to us the three writers and said we really like susan b would you be interested in writing this language and wardrobe musical so that's how that happened very nice very that's nice it's always great to collaborate yeah. with some of the same people and create uh -huh. lots of great right. music going forward and of course this one i oh. mentioned oh. in the introduction to, uh, tell us again yeah. about uh, your work well, Ichabod. Yeah, yeah Ichabod. Ichabod's based on the legend of sleepy hollow the, the yes washington irving story uh it's a one-man musical and originally it was written for tommy tune and we did it in boston and we that's did it in right. new york um and it was really a, a great pleasure working on that and uh, working with Tommy Tim. It's it's fun. one it's one actor and a piano, so it's very you know economical to produce these days. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. You can even string it. <laughs> who's that fine gentleman? Oh that's me. <laughs> Visiting some friends in Santa Fe a couple of years ago. Santa Fe is one place. I, I've been to Albuquerque, but not Santa Fe. And everybody keeps two places in that region. Everybody keeps telling me to go to, and I have friends and colleagues in both Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Sedona, Arizona. Both uh, Santa Fe is quite quite a beautiful place, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It's a great place to vacation. There's so much to see and do out there. Yeah, and the yeah. country around it. I mean, you can drive and see so many things and have so many experiences 
in the business end of things. Do you get to travel a lot? We have you know, traveled a lot, not prior lately to the so pandemic. much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, prior to the pandemic, we, yeah. we'd fit in some trips whenever we could you know, between jobs. I've been telling people that they used to say BC meant before Christ, but now it means before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the updated sure. version. <laughs> right. Well, uh, uh, an epic career, my friend. You really, uh, you know, you've touched so many lives with your music and with your creativity, and you continue to. And uh, we've just had really scratched the surface of it with the videos, with the live performance, with the photos, with the commentary. Really a pleasure having you with us on the, the Gym Master Show live, Tom. And I hope uh, you'll, you'll come back again and you'll keep me posted on all the wonderful sure. things you're doing. And I hope we get a chance to break bread in person with yeah. uh, June and everybody. And sure, uh, sure. I also hope that uh, the show met whatever expectations that you had and that you oh, enjoyed the time with me great. as much as oh, I have with you. I've had a wonderful time, really. It's been great. A little like Ralph Edwards, this is your life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I have memories that came back tonight. Well, that wait, we started, long, long we started when you were five years old. <laughs> fifth grade, fifth grade. And we're still only up, only, uh, up to the age... <laughs> 54. <laughs> hey, that sounds good. I'll take that. Stop I'll right there. <laughs> Tom, you're the best. It was really a pleasure. I just want to show you some of the levity coming in uh, from the oh. our wonderful uh, peanut gallery here around the world. Jane says lots of claps. She loved it. Sherry Larson says thank you for spending your evening and talent with us. Love your music. Maureen says this has been such an incredible evening. Thanks for being here, Tom and Jim. You are truly the master conversationalist. Thank you very much, Maureen. I guess my name masters, uh, I guess I was born with the right last name, <laughs> but I was going to be an architect like you too. I studied oh, architecture, how about that? That in common. I love mechanical that. drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still love architecture. I mean, whenever mm -hmm. I'm in a city or, or wherever I am, I always look up. I always look at the buildings, the lighting, the shadowing, the, the, you know, bridges. I'm always studying them, looking at them. I love architecture. And yeah. I'm sure you do too. You find yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once uh, you do, you, you, you always do. Uh, but Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, right? Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> and uh, the big one in New York City, oh, Robert oh. Moses, who oh. built the bridges and the World's Fair oh. and the oh. Long Island <laughs> Parkways and <laughs> All of those things. <laughs> he was the master builder in New York for sure, Robert Moses. Uh, I believe yeah. the Throgs Neck Bridge, the Whitestone Bridge, the Triborough Bridge were all him. The World's Fair in 64 was Robert Moses. The Northern and Southern State Parkways on Long Island, I think. Robert Moses Causeway, Robert Moses State Beach. He just, mm -hmm. his stamp was really on the New York area. Bona says, thank you again for a lovely evening. Great pictures. Love your music as well. Come back and see us. I will. So, so the door has been left open for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, this was amazing, Thomas. And before we go, there is somebody here that uh, wanted to say uh, thank you for joining us. My sidekick, George Burns, was with us. <laughs> Okay. So long, George. You never worked with George in your illustrious career, huh? <laughs> no, no. I admired him. George oh, and Gracie. You know? Everybody, I tell you. Whenever I show this during the course of the show, it brings a smile to everybody and it usually surprises the guest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, there he is. And he says, good night. Oh, and uh, all right. good thanks night. for all the good times. And uh, you stay well. As I Thank say you. to all the guests, uh, be sure and stretch those legs <laughs> get that circulation going uh after spending okay. a good amount of time with us my friend okay this has been great thank you so much my pleasure spread the word about our show we would love oh. that and uh we'll keep the porch light on for you tom okay thank you so much thank have, you have a great night thanks All for right. the great music oh thank you bye-bye bye-bye now Thomas Tierney, composer, lyricist extraordinaire, right here exclusively on the Gym Master Show Live. And again, when we do these shows, we don't just do two minutes of chit chat, talk about the new book, the new CD and the movie and in and out. We like to go deep. We like to bring you guys in. We like to have something that sort of gels and something that forms through osmosis. <clears throat> when I turn the lights on and I come on and say, hey, welcome to the show. 
You never know what's going to happen. You never know what direction we're going to go in. And sometimes I don't and the guest doesn't. And that's beautiful, right? Because sometimes you can get some really amazing conversations, light, love, levity, levity, interaction, and uh, great entertainment. So that's what we like to do on the show. And uh, when you're done watching, uh, you get a good feel of uh, who the guest is and what really makes them tick and what their passions are. And uh, like I said, it's old school, like Dick Cavett and Carson, some of the others, good conversations. And uh, mixed in with levity and uh, lots of fun viewer interaction and whatever else happens. And that's what I love about it. So you learn about me, you learn about yourselves and you learn about the guests and about life. This was amazing folks. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, if you guys want to see this again, it's on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Gym Masters TV. We would love it. Our channel of course is dedicated to entertaining, informing, educating, and inspiring. That's Gym Masters TV. That's the YouTube channel. And of course, the show you're watching is the Gym Masters Show Live, Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, seven days a week, live with epic episodes. Don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the levity. Don't forget to find that Zen place. Mine is with loving family and friends, of course, cycling and tennis and music and writing and, and gardening and sports and all of it. And of course, the ocean, living here along the coast. It's a, a Zen place for me, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it, floating in it. I love the ocean and my work in television, radio, film, and stage over the years. That's another Zen place for me as well. So find your Zen place, gang. Share your talents with the world. Don't let anybody talk you down, talk you out. Uh, keep the faith. If you've been having a rough day, rough month, rough year, uh, Come join us again. We'll always put a smile on your face, entertain you, uh, inform, educate, and inspire along the way. I knew this was going to be a fun show, and it was way beyond. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that, Maureen. Glad you loved it. And uh, thanks again, gang. We have an epic weekend of shows coming up starting tomorrow. Look who's here. Actor, writer, director Harley Whalen is going to be with us live at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. He's originally from Sweden. He, of course, is here in the United States, and he's been in some of your favorite TV shows and movies over the years, and he's incredible. He's also an epic film producer himself. He's on the Saturday afternoon episode of the Gym Master Show Live. It's going to be great. Then coming up on Saturday night... Ella Roberts is going to be with us live from Australia. Ella Roberts is a fantastic singer and actress. She performed uh, here in the United States in the epic PBS special, Celtic Heart, which I was blessed to be a part of, uh, working with composer Tim Janis and the team. Ray Nesbitt was with us and the Harp Twins and uh, brilliant flautist Emma McGuin and so many other friends were with us. Uh, for this epic special. So Ella is going to be live from Australia, and we're so excited. It's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific tomorrow night. For folks in Australia, that'll be what actually will turn out to be 10 a.m. Sunday. While it's 8 p.m. Eastern here, it is 10 a.m. in Australia, at least in Sydney, where Ella is. Ella is in Sydney, Australia. She's going to be with us tomorrow night. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. She's amazing. She's all excited. We're so excited to have her here. Coming up next week, boy, do we have an epic week. The founder of the Celtic rock band <clears throat> Black 47 and the author of Rockaway Blue is going to be with us. Uh, we're going to talk about his new book and so much more. Larry Kerwin is going to be with us. And we also have Brian Kurlander, who starred in House of Cards. Hot Summer Nights and Star and so much more. He's working right now in a film with Morgan Freeman. Uh, we were chatting today. He's going to be with us on Tuesday next week. He's actually in the midst of working on a film right now as we speak with Morgan Freeman. Wednesday, Dr. Annabelle Bugatti is going to be with us. Relationship expert, licensed massage, massage, licensed marriage. <laughs> Big difference. Licensed, you know, I have friends who are massage therapists, so it just flows off my tongue easily. Licensed marriage and family therapist. 
and psychotherapist as well, going to be with us. Get your questions ready next week. Also, we have the creators of the epic new Christmas film, Rekindling Christmas, Rebecca and James Ganieri. They are going to be live from uh, Los Angeles. He's an epic producer, film producer, writer, director, and so much more. She's a best-selling novelist. They're a husband and wife, and they're ex executive producers of this Emmy-nominated film, Rekindling Christmas. That's next week. Also next week, pop and country music singer and musician Samantha Taylor is going to be with us as well, which I think is really, really fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. And so many more. I mean, it was really, this has been really an epic time for us here. And Tom Tierney, composer, lyricist, ex uh, lyricist extraordinaire, composer and lyricist. I'm running out of words. Been talking too much today. Been talking since 6 a.m. this morning on the air. <laughs> running out of steam. Tom Tierney, composer and lyricist. He was with us tonight. And boy, did we have a great time with him and with all of you. And uh, yes, that porch light will be left on for Thomas. You guys loved it. Thank you, Jane. Now get some sleep. Definitely get some sleep. We'll be back uh, tomorrow. Two shows, the afternoon show. Uh, and you're going to love it, uh, Jane, because Harley, who is with us tomorrow, is originally from Sweden. And he makes his home here in the States. But he's an epic uh, film producer from Sweden and actor and writer and director. He's going to be with us. 3 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m., 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And then tomorrow night, Ella Roberts, live from Australia, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Whew. I sound like a clock sometimes. Gang, you're the best. Thanks for being with us. We love all of you. We appreciate you guys being with us. We'll keep cranking out all these great episodes and all the epic fun and all the music and levity and levity as long as you guys are here. Have a terrific night. Uh, a couple more comments coming in. Sherry Larson says, thank you for another great evening. Enjoyed. Everyone have a great rest of your night and day. Good night, everyone. You too, Sherry in Kansas and Maureen in Arizona. Jim, it sounds like you need to go stretch your legs and have a peaceful night. Sweet be your dreams. Absolutely. We're going to do that pronto. <laughs> Good night to Mary Bishop as well. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Remember he used to say that, right? Jimmy Durante. All right, gang, you guys take care. We do love you all. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Have a good night. Be well. We'll see you tomorrow. Two shows, 3 p.m. Eastern and then 8 p.m. Eastern. We call that a double lovety weekend coming up just for you. Have a good night. Be well. Take care.